Well, we've studied a lot of topics in physics, and it is now time to investigate the nature of light, which is pretty mysterious, I must say. It is a good thing to study after investigating waves, because we're going to find out that many of the characteristics of waves are certainly applicable to light as well. They transfer energy. Well, light transfers energy. Waves transfer energy, as we saw in the last unit. A wave along a slinky or along a medium of any sort transfers energy. But what form is the light that transfers energy? Is it waves or particles? And that's not a trivial question. In material bodies, like the wind or a river, they carry energy, but they also carry matter. But the waves themselves, like in an ocean or along some other medium, they do not transfer matter, even though they transfer energy. So light, does it travel as a wave or a particle? That is a big question, and we can't answer it directly through our senses because light is of a nature that you can't see the underlying thing going on, certainly with the naked eye. So it's a little more difficult. It's not like sending a wave down a, a, a slinky or a spring or a string or an ocean wave. But nevertheless, by the end of the 1800s, it was accepted that really what it was is an electromagnetic wave. And that's good, and it's still true to this day. But in the early 1900s, it was also shown that you could consider it as a particle as well. So it has a particle nature. And that is not going to be our emphasis in this unit. We are going to look at the wave nature. But nevertheless, the particle nature is known as the photon theory of light. So you've heard about light being made of photons, like little particles of light. And it's perfectly valid to describe them as such. In fact, in modern times, we have come to realize that we have to consider both the theory of waves and particles at the same time, because they're both valid. It's known as the wave-particle duality. So there is the it has the nature of wave characteristics and particle characteristics. So that sounds a little confusing, and it is, and it has a long and rich history. One important player in this is Niels Bohr, and he demonstrated that any particular experiment has to be understood in terms of one or the other, the wave theory or the particle theory. But you can't describe them, a particular experiment, in both ways. Whatever experiment you're doing, you got to kind of decide, do I describe light as a wave or a particle? Again, kind of mysterious, right? But to really understand light, to understand it the best you can, at least, you need to be aware that both aspects of light are true simultaneously. And they complement each other. And this is known as the principle of complementarity. Well, like I said, we're going to study the wave nature of light. And so it's important to get a little background into what some of the evidence is for it. And the Huygens principle by Christian Huygens in the mid to late 1600s. He made the following actually quite informed and profound statement that every point on a wave front can be considered as a source of tiny wavelets that spread out in the forward direction at the speed of the wave itself, you know, the speed of the medium. The new wave front is the tangent of all the little wavelets along that previous front. So, You've already actually seen the results of this in the ripple tanks, water waves. So we have a source and a crest. And what he's talking about is this crest is like at every point along it, you have a little micro disturbance. So each of these little points here and all of them in between are little microscopic regions of disturbance that produce little circular waves. Okay, so little circular waves come out. And the little wavelet has radius r. So we can draw the others in. We're only going to draw 
representative sample adequate to describe what's going on here and visually see it <clears throat> all right and so the tangent to all the wavelets looks like this ah so it's just another crest so there's a crest and you know you can think of if we make this this crest here it's traveling along a little bit later it's over here you know well, what caused it to go from here to here and so the model is is this little wavelet of disturbance producing ultimately the next crest of the shape that it manifests itself as now this distance radius is just the speed times the time so v times t is just the distance okay so we're going to put an obstacle in the way of a plane wave coming into this thing and we introduced this in the last unit on waves as the process of bending around a corner and now we're going to look at that a little more carefully because if we consider that these crests that are moving along are produced by these tiny wavelets point source wavelets along the front and that they produce their own little circular waves then we can kind of see it as follows here we go now notice there's no energy from here getting through but this little circle is made and so we have a tangent to the a tangent line to the wavelets but then there's nothing else over here uh, but tangent to this one causes causes a little curvature effect let's kind of see how the next one would look so we put the little wavelets on there and well the wavelets are produced by the point source disturbances and here's the little wavelets produced by those point sources oh yeah you can kind of see some curving if you draw a line tangent to all the wavelets you see this bending going on which in reality is what we see in nature over and over so Huygens principle predicts the behavior of this bending around corners by obstacles and that process that effect is known as diffraction now if this was if these if 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 you know light for instance was a particle then it would not bend around here it would be a particle that shoots right on straight through and there'd be nothing over here and all the energy would be contained underneath so it doesn't occur for particles so this is certainly evidence assuming this model is correct and it does match the way nature reveals itself then uh, it's good evidence for the wave nature of light so here we have you know a barrier a little opening here and this energy getting through and you've seen how that occurs with waterways before so the real question is whether or not light actually behaves that way and you probably can guess the answer Woohoo! yes it is so we're going to look at that a little more so the huygens principle does a real nice job of explaining how light bends around corners the ray model on the other hand does not explain this very well although it does explain how basic optical systems function and we'll look into that later so just kind of to give an idea here so we got a point source and a straight edge here so you're going to shine this thing and this is a light ray which is again just a model and it doesn't account for this bending and so basically you see this region here where you can be illuminated because this straight edge is a wall essentially blocking the light so we have geometric shadow in this region and geometric illumination over here so dark light and there's it's instantly goes from dark to light that's what that would predict but Huygens principle we know that when we go through a narrow slit and we have waves passing through a narrow slit they spread out in all directions and that's inconsistent with this you know basically narrow slit or this transition this edge because again it doesn't as we've already seen it doesn't matter if there is just one edge or two edges but this wave front coming through here 
can be broken down into an inf a potential infinite number of little point sources. And then again, each little wavelet, you connect the tangents of the little crests together, and you get the resulting pattern of wave energy passing through. Now we can describe these wavelets as we can draw rays, okay, to describe the direction of the of the wave crest itself. And that's a good extension of the model. So let's consider two of those rays. And they're going to hit a screen a long ways away. So a real long ways away. At least compared to the slit width A. There's the slit width. And basically here's one of those, like right in the center, one of those wavelets and the energy from that that hits the screen up at this point. So we're picking a particular point here. And the little wavelet up on top here, that the wavelet there, will also produce energy that eventually gets to that point. All right, so there's an infinite number of combinations of this along the way, but this is a particular point. We're considering two little micro wavelets, and as their energy, as their crest meets at this point. We're going to consider the geometry of this situation. So we have theta. That's basically this angle here between the first one and a horizontal. And the horizontal distance is d. And then we have y for the height above the up up the screen that it's projecting. All right, so now I want to expand the view of what's going on here so we can see the geometry a little better. So let's do that. So here is the first ray from the middle wavelet, and there's the ray from the top wavelet. And this distance is A over 2, obviously. Okay, so it's half the slit width. Now, if I do a perpendicular line between these, now these are not perfectly parallel, are they? So these are not perfectly parallel, which is why we got this little blip here. And in fact, if we connect this vertically now, this is a vertical line, and this is a, par a, a, a perpendicular line, this little skinny triangle is the same triangle that we saw up here, right, essentially. Now theta is this angle, and theta is also this angle, okay? And this width, then, is A over 2 sine of theta, because A over 2 is the hypotenuse, here's the hypotenuse, and this is the adjacent side, this is the opposite side, so sine of theta hypotenuse sine of theta. There you go. So the outgoing rays are just about parallel. The path difference between the two rays to the point P is A over 2 sine of theta. The difference in the path length between this and this is just this little tiny distance. This little tiny bit is the only, because this is perpendicular here, and uh, so this What's left here is the same length as this. All right, hopefully that makes sense. And I've demonstrated this before with the cardboard waves in class too, where they, where the crests meet. And that's the kind of thing we're talking about here. It's the interference pattern produced by the little wavelets. All right. So A is a slit width. If the path difference equals one half a wavelength. So if the path difference between this one and this one is a half a wavelength, then light from the two rays arrives at P. But, okay, if it's a half a wavelength difference, crest doesn't mean meet crest, does it? Rather, crest meets trough. And if crest meets trough, you know there's destructive interference, cancellation. And if it's light, then cancellation produces a dark region. We call it a dark fringe. And that dark fringe will appear when the path difference, when a over 2 sine of theta is equal to plus or minus a half a wavelength. Or sine of theta, the 2's will go away there. We can divide both sides by a, and we get lambda over a. All right, now that was quite a few thoughts there, and hope it wasn't too confusing. If it was, you can listen to it again. But... This video is long enough, and in the next lesson, we're going to kind of look at this whole thing over again, try and clarify it, repeat it a little bit, and see if we can 
understand this concept and, and carry on with it.